Connor Bedard is having a really good rookie season. Just because he won't get 100 points like Crosby or win the Calder with 50 goals like Ovechkin doesn't mean his rookie season has been disappointing, especially with the team he's on. You throw in the fact that because of his injury earlier this season, he will for sure have played less games than whoever's nominated alongside him for the Calder, and he's probably going to have more points than them too. I'd be shocked if he didn't win it. Here's the thing though. Part of the reason he's so far ahead of the next two in rookie scoring is because they're both defensemen. Number two is a Hughes brother, so of course he's putting up points and showing off the skill that seemingly runs in the family. As the Minnesota Wild paid a visit to Chicago yesterday though, number three on that list became even more interesting. The Wild completely thumped Chicago yesterday, wasn't even close. Kaprizov was all world again. He's got to be the undisputed best player in that team's history, no? In terms of talent anyways at least, I know a lot of people still have a soft spot in their heart for Marion Gabryk. And Miko Koivu of course, he's a legend there. Brock Faber as a rookie continues to be Mr. Everything for this team though. And he had it on full display again yesterday, fittingly against Bedard, we'll get to that in a second. But watch this play. Starts in his own zone, turns on the Jets, all the way into the Ozone, couple of crossovers to cut in, makes it look like he's going to shoot and both Hawks defenders bite hard on that. But the kid's much more than just a good first pass, minute munching defenseman. He's smart. Beautiful little drop to Kaprizov who's wide open because of him. Good night Chicago. That assist made him pass Ryan Hartman for 5th on the team in points with 43, so he's able to produce offensively as a rookie on the back end which is not easy to do. And this is the stat that made me go wow. At 21 years old, he leads the team in ice time by almost 2 full minutes, and the next closest is Jonas Brodin who's been in Minnesota Wild since 10,000 BC. That just goes to show how much they trust this kid in all situations. Like I said, he's Mr. Everything. What a story too. Gets drafted in the second round by LA, but is from Minnesota and played college hockey for the Gophers. Then gets traded to his hometown team and becomes a stud number one defenseman with them in his first year. Like I said, I do think Bedard will end up winning it, especially since he's still 18 and Faber's 21. But Brock Faber deserves some more Calder love here. More people should be giving attention to how great of a rookie season he's having. Aaron Eckblad won the Calder in 2015 with four less minutes of average ice time and four less points than Faber has right now. And Ekblad won that over Mark Stone and Johnny Gaudreau who had phenomenal rookie seasons. Now, NHL Network posted this and basically asked if Brock Faber's having a better rookie season than Bedard. And a lot of people are just comparing the stats. Oh, Bedard has way more points and way less games. He's having a much better season than Faber. But again, Faber's a defenseman who plays in all situations, by the way. His main concern is not putting up points. Of course, the guy who's supposed to be an offensive superstar is going to have more points than him. I'm not saying Faber should win it. I'm saying it's a lot closer race than the point totals and the Michigan highlight reel goals will make you believe because Faber does so much that doesn't end up on the highlight reel. I do think Bedard will end up being the more impactful player. I think he's going to win some Rocket Richards and maybe even a Hart Trophy or two, but Faber deserves a lot of love in the Calder Trophy race, man. He's a stud. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments. This should be good hearing your thoughts on these two in regards to the Calder race. I can't wait. I'll see you in the next one. You're awesome.